How's it going, everybody? Thanks for uh, putting up with my over-the-top intro. I figured I'd make one, just because this is a bit of an over-the-top watch. So first of all, full disclosure, this is one of my favorite watches uh, of all time. And so I don't know if this is going to be so much review as more of a, a biased talk. But in any case, I think that this is a great watch, and uh, I just wanted to present it. So as you can see, this is the Breitling Chronomat 44. This is a bit of a polarizing watch, most likely because of its style and the size of this watch, but for me personally, it's a great watch. I was always attached to this watch. I saw this watch first on an episode of a show called Super Factories. This was a show about factories and how things were built, and they did a special on Breitling. The watch that they did it on uh, was the Chronomat 44. This was around 2011, 2010, something like that, and they were basically showing how the watch was made, the movement, all the steps in it, and so on. So ever since then, I became attached to this watch. So this was basically a grail watch for me. This was a grail for nearly 10 years. It took me a long time to pull a trigger on this one. I needed a specific one. I'm a fan of a lot of Schneider era Breitling designs. I have another Breitling that's pretty much a similar design. Um, and so this one is essentially an apex, I think, of the Schneider era. What that means is it's basically bigger cases, full blinged out polish, busy dials, and rider tabs. But this one specifically here is from 2011. So as I say, I love this watch. I can definitely see why some people wouldn't, but for me, this is one of the best watches uh, there is. So let's first talk about the case. The case of this is 44 millimeters. It's got 22 millimeter lugs. It's 16.4 millimeters thick, and the lug to lug distance is approximately 53.4 millimeters. So as you can see, by these measurements, it's, it's fairly big. I think that this watch doesn't wear quite as big as it suggests, but I think also I'm just very used to wearing large watches. This thing, I think that though partially you need to feel it in person. The thickness is a bit misleading. Yes, again, if you're used to wearing Rolex subs or anything really under 40 millimeters, this is going to feel like a tank. For me personally though, I don't think it feels as big as it suggests, maybe because it's so comfortable. The hook down lugs really hug the wrist and the combination with the pilot style bracelet, very nice. It just to me simply doesn't feel as thick as it is. I think that the dome crystal takes up a bit of that thickness so it doesn't, to me the crystal size doesn't totally translate to thickness but yeah, nevertheless it's a bigger watch. The fact that it has a steel bezel also makes it look a little bit smaller in my opinion. If it was a full dial size at 44 millimeters, I think that would be a lot bigger looking. Think Panerai or maybe even an IWC Flieger. Pretty big, the bigger ones. Uh, this this has a closed case back and 500 meters of water resistance. There's screw down crowns here. Uh, the crown action is very nice. And it's got screw down pushers as well. Basically you could essentially use this as a dive watch even though this is classified as a pilot's watch but the features are pretty much the same, right? It's got a rotating bezel, a timing bezel, water resistance, and so on. So really, you know, it's yes, it's classified and was marketed as a pilot's watch, but pretty much a dive watch too. As far as the size, it's a bit big for a dress watch, I think. I mean, I have worn it with a suit, and I'll just show you right here what that looks like. In my opinion, I think that it's totally fine, but I personally don't really care about whether it's a dress watch or not, I'll wear any watch with anything really. This watch to me, the way that the case is designed, it has a lot of round angles, there's there's no slab sides. I think when a watch does not have slab sides and then when it's rounder, it looks smaller than it is or at least feels smaller. For example, the Tudor Black Bay, just the regular 41 like I have, it's technically a thinner watch than this Breitling. But it doesn't, to me, look much thinner. The Tudor has slab side cases, which to me makes it look thicker than the Breitling. So I think they've done a really good job here at kind of designing a case that, yes, is big, but it, it bleeds into the wrist. It looks really good. It doesn't feel as thick as it is. Compared to a Speedmaster, this watch is much bigger. It feels bigger. It's heavier. It feels more like a chunk of steel in your wrist, if you can see here. 
for a lot of people, the Speedmaster is a relatively big watch, right? When you wear this chronomat for a bit and then you put the Speedmaster on, the Speedmaster feels small. So, you know, once you wear this and get used to it, it makes other watches that are more normal size feel smaller, at least for me. I note too that I have seven and a half inch wrists, so my wrists are quite big, or at least I think they're generally big. I can handle most watches. This is probably the maximum size I would go myself. When you wear this watch all day with the size, you're totally going to get used to it. You might put it on at first and think, wow, this is heavy, this is big, but after a day or so, or especially a couple weeks, you don't even notice it, right? For me, it's very comfortable. The finishing of this watch is outstanding. As you can see, it's full polished. It just totally shines in the light. I really love the Breitling full polish. Maybe that's my, maybe I'm a bit gaudy of a person. I'm not sure, but I, I really love it. It just pops in the sun. Even when you're in sort of overcast, sort of a gray day, it's the shiniest thing that's around. It just pops. It's just a shiny, super shiny, very noticeable and very conspicuous. But for me, I love that. As you can see here too, the crown has that typical chronomat onion style crown. It's really nice. It's very easy to grip. The pop and the pop is really nice. Overall, it's a great crown. The screw on pushers are really functional as well. Really good. So the bezel here is the Breitling Rider Tab, typical Breitling, Breitling Rider Tab bezel. This one has what's known as the galactic font. A lot of people don't like this font. I quite like it myself, just because probably because this was the first one I ever saw. You can get various versions of this, for example, the Chronomat Airborne does not use these numbers, so it's a little bit more tame perhaps, but I don't know, I always kind of like these numbers. I always thought it was kind of a unique feature of this watch. You don't really see it, but I can pretty much I can understand why one wouldn't really like them, because they're a little weird, but I think that's part of the charm for me. The Rider tabs make this bezel easy to turn. They're a little bit smaller than other Breitling watches that I've used. They don't stick up as high. But if you notice here, they kind of the bezel kind of curves down as you go. So when you go from one rider tab to the next, the bezel is actually kind of angled down. So at one side of the rider tab, it's higher, and then when you get to the next one, it's lower, and that gives you more grip. So it's easy to turn. It's very much designed to use the rider tabs if you want to turn it, and so definitely use those when you're manipulating the bezel. The clicks in this bezel are a little weird. It has 240 clicks. I don't really I know why they decided to do that. I'm, I can't seem to find any information which states why. The action is a little odd, honestly. It's not my favorite. I prefer Rolex bezels or Tudor bezels. I think those are the best ones. This is, it's different. I'll give it that, but it is a little weird. So when you turn this thing, it, you may find it unsatisfying. I personally don't really care too much, but it is a little odd. I note too that the bezel is a captive bezel, classic Breitling style. It's fixed with screws interesting detail. This bezel too is the brushed version. You can get a lot of different variations, even PVD, you know, GMT bezels and so on, full polished ones. I think that the full polished ones kind of make the numbers stick out a bit more. If you see in this picture, that's kind of what I mean. I always like the brushed bezel myself. I think it kind of gives the watch a little bit of contrast. It's not full chromed out, but it's it's pretty chromed out, but I, I like the brush bezel personally. The dial is outstanding. If you look close with a loop or something, the quality of the dial is very good. It's very busy. It's it's very of that era of Breitling, but for me, that's what I liked. The dial is very easy to read. I feel like they did a very good job of making a busy dial, but making it legible. At least for me, if you're not into busy dials, you probably won't think this is legible, but for me, it's great. It's very shiny. The hands and the indices really shine in the sun. Even in low light, you can just see it pop. The loom on the watch is very good still. This watch, as I say, is about 10 years old at this time of recording, so and it still works great. I also love the white gold Breitling badge with the wings. I am one of those people that is still stuck to the Breitling wings logo. I don't really like the new logo. I mean, I like it. But I prefer the wings, if you see what I mean. I think that maybe just because of the era I grew up in, that's to me was always the Breitling logo, so that's what I'm used to. I just like it. I also like the B and the anchor on the counterbalance of the chronograph hand, too. Really nice. The crystal on this watch is 
It's great. It's a typical Brightling crystal. This one's domed. The anti-reflective coating on Brightling crystals is very good. It's a great crystal. I do note though, when you buy some of these older Brightlings, the crystal, the coating on the crystal does wear off. This one is a bit worn. It's not as good as my other Brightling. Uh, my other Brightling is not quite as worn on the crystal, and so just keep that in mind. If you do buy an older Brightling that has AR coating, and you really, you really want that, it may be kind of gone, and so you'll have to get a new crystal. The dial also has a tachymetric scale. I would never use that cool design nonetheless. And it's also got on the chapter ring, you can you can divide uh, a minute into 100. So you can tell you know, what percentage of a minute a period of time is. Both of these features, I would never use it. But I feel like when I buy watches, I'm not trying to rationalize them in terms of what I'm going to use. It's, it's kind of like, for me at least, buying a, a sports car. I just get it because it's cool. <laughs> I don't, uh, you know, I don't really rationalize why I'm using these things, right? It's just a, it's a cool feature to have, pretty much. The bracelet on this watch is a Breitling Pilot bracelet. So this is a five-link bracelet. Each particular link is separate, so they're separate little pieces. When you take apart this type of bracelet, or really most Breitling bracelets, it's a little bit tedious. It takes a little bit more time. With the slash cut, it essentially makes it so you have to take off a couple links in order to sort of size it. You can't just take one link out or one screw out to take it apart. You have to take the links apart, essentially. A little bit of practice, it's fine, though. What that does, it makes it very comfortable because each particular link articulates, at least for me. That's my favorite type of bracelet. I just find it really comfortable. You'll note when the bracelet on this watch meets the case, it fully articulates as well. And so with a big watch like this, I think it's important in terms of fitment because it'll hug your wrist quite well. The clasp, it's pretty good. It's a, it's a pressed metal clasp that Breitling got a bit of flack for. If you see here, it has micro adjustments. They're hidden within the clasp, so there's no holes in the clasp. Um, it's a good clasp. It, you know, usually when we think pressed metal clasp and friction fit, we're thinking cheap. This one, yes, it is not as good as a newer Breitling clasp, the milled ones, or a Tudor clasp, Rolex, etc. However, it's not cheap feeling. It does not feel cheap like other friction fits. Even Fortis or Tag Heuer friction fit class, this is a higher quality. It's a, it's a nice friction fit class, but it, again, it's not as good as it could be, I think. But they sort of have remedied that with their newer watches, and they're working to making that better. So, I mean, yeah. I suppose if you're going to get a Rolex from 2011, it has a better class than this. But for me, honestly, the type of class, it's not really the most important feature. It's not like one of those deal breaker for things for me personally if a watch clasp is mediocre. I, For me, if the aesthetics are there, that's kind of what I'm looking for. The movement in this watch is the Breitling B01. This Chronomat is the first watch that had a Breitling B01 movement. The movement is excellent. I think it's one of the better chronographs you can get. It's a world-class movement in my opinion. It has a 70-hour power reserve, a column wheel, and a vertical clutch. If you hear it click here, excellent feel. The pushers feel great. It is a different feel than, for example, a Speedmaster. It feels a little crisper, a little more premium, and just a little nicer. So it, it, really, does, it really is a great movement. I think the BO1 is a fantastic movement. Part of the appeal too, I guess, now being more engulfed in watches than I was just over 10 years ago, I think the fact that this is the first watch of the BO1 movement is really interesting for me personally. Okay, so as you can tell, I like this watch. However, some of the common complaints are the ones as follows. I've mentioned this before. Too much polish, too busy dial, too big, too etc. You know, for me personally, I think that that's kind of why I like this watch. There's a little part of me that th says, oh, everybody hates this or people don't like this, so it makes me kind of like it. Maybe I'm just a weirdo, but... I love this watch. I think I have an attachment because I've seen it a long time ago, and I always wanted one. I always liked it. I have tried the new Chronomats on. I love those ones too, really nice, but, you know, I, 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 I just had to get this one. I would have been kicking myself if I didn't. It's just, for me personally, I'm very much attached to this era of Breitling. Breitling is my favorite brand. 
if I had to stick to only one brand, I could stick to Breitling and probably be fairly content. I, I really do like the watches. I think they're awesome. The direction the brand's going in now, I like, I understand. They're kind of going with what the market wants now. Totally cool. But for me, I, I really like these watches, these discontinued ones. So that kind of leads into the pricing a little bit. This is a discontinued watch, so most likely you'll have to buy it used. This watch here really just totally tanks on the second-hand market. This watch was nearly $10,000 new at retail, and now you can get them for maybe 40% off, even up to 60% off, depending on the condition and what accoutrement come with it. It's, it's a great value at that price if you can deal with the style and the size. It's a really, it is a really good value. It's an impeccably made watch. It feels expensive. It looks expensive. I think it's an outstanding value. I love this watch, and for me, it's a keeper. I'll never sell this watch. I wear it all the time. And yeah, for me, this really gives me the satisfaction I'm looking for, but I like bigger watches. I think that if you had a smaller wrist, again, I have a seven and a half inch wrist. I think if you had maybe under six and a half, I think this thing would overhang. If you don't care and you like how that looks, go for it. But I think a lot of watch people would probably see that and think, uh, I don't really like that, you know, so probably best to wear this watch if you've got a bigger wrist. But again, if you like it, rock it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks, right? So thanks for watching my video on my Breitling Chronomat 44. This is one of my favorite watches of all time, and so I, I really love it. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out to me in the comments. I'll try and assist you. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching my video, and take care. Bye-bye.